coming up on MCTV. The latest Great Decisions lecture looked at modern slavery. MCTV starts now. Welcome to MCTV. I'm Will Best. Sex trafficking and modern slavery and why it should matter to students was the topic of the Great Decisions Lecture on February 19th. Professor of Communication Studies and Coordinator of Women's Studies, Trudy Peterson, led the discussion aimed to educate students on the prevalence of sex trafficking and modern slavery. Peterson also wanted to dispel the belief that only women and girls can be affected by sex trafficking and modern slavery. Also, she called attention to the lack of resources for men and boys who have been exploited. Millions of people are affected by trafficking, and it happens everywhere. No one is immune, and it typically happens to people who are their most, at their most vulnerable. Tonight, history professor Michelle Damien will be discussing the Philippines and the U.S. in this week's Great Decisions Lecture. On Monday, February 24th, the annual Fox Lecturing Classics returned to campus. Dr. Jackie Murray of the University of Kentucky spoke on freedom and unfreedom of speech in Apollonius Argonautica. The lecture series is named for Bernice L. Fox, a professor in the Classics Department from 1947 to 1981. In her will, Fox has donated most of her estate to the Classics Department to further the teaching of Latin. Her very inspiring teaching for many years of Latin, Greek, mythology, and, and English uh, made a great impact on a, on a great number of students through the years. And so this has helped alumni feel connected to the college, and, and many of them have been supportive of the college and, and direct recognition of uh, uh, Professor Fox's impact on them. Dr. Murray was the 35th speaker to be showcased in the annual Fox Lecture Series. Usually, it's not okay in college to just make it up as you go along, but that's not the case for the Monmouth College Improv Team. Improv is all about acting out a story without a script based on an idea provided by the audience on a slip of paper. On Friday, February 14th, the Monmouth College Improv acted out eight different games, with games such as Four Squares, Dun Dun Dun, Slips, The Life Of, and the dating game. I, I'd probably say my favorite part about improv is doing so many different thing, scenes and being like a completely different person. The team puts on a show once every month in Stockdale and will be holding tryouts soon. Students could put on their bell bottoms and boogie down last Friday night. ASAP organized a silent disco that allowed students to listen to three different channels of music through headphones. A similar event was held last semester, but organizers said it wasn't well attended, probably because it was scheduled during homecoming. Again, the first turnout was really bad, but that was more my fault because I played it in the middle of homecoming. But I am, I'm, I'm not super surprised just because there's not really much to do here on a Friday night, which is why I did it on a Friday night, because we need a little bit of fun on Fridays, you know? Yeah, basically. ASAP's next event will be Thursday, March 19th, with a coffee house at 9 in Scotland Yard. As spring is almost here, the Monmouth Winds Ensemble held their almost spring concert. On Sunday, the band had played nine different classical pieces of music under the direction of Stacy Jook. Talia Kupis, Nick Thomas, and Austin Fow were featured as soloists. Um, I'd say we worked together pretty cohesively. We worked together get together pretty well. Um, just. The chemistry is pretty good. We don't really have any issues in general. Everyone, we're just there to make music and have fun, so. Monmouth Band's spring concert will be Sunday, May 3rd at 2 in Dahl Chapel. Coming up in sports, after the break, the Monmouth College Fighting Scots basketball team takes on Grinnell.
on Saturday, February 8th, the Fighting Scots men basketball team faced off against conference opponent Grinnell. Before the game started, senior D. Heiler was awarded a ball to commemorate 1,000 points during his college career. Grinnell took an early lead as they relied on three-point shot heavily in the first 10 minutes of the game. But Monmouth was able to find a rhythm, making 30 points in the paint in the first half. Monmouth would go into the half leading 38-35. Monmouth would keep its lead the entire second half, winning by a final score of 94-90. Heiler finished with 22 points, making seven of his 12 attempts. Uh, we just we just need to get a win, man. We done lost three in a row before this, and I just feel like we needed to get this win, and it showed on the court. We played hard all 40 minutes. In women's basketball, the team heads to Wartburg for the first round of the NCAA tournament this Friday. Good luck, Scots. And that's MCTV. I'm Will Best. You can also watch us online at monmouthcollege.edu slash MCTV. We'll see you next time.